No. Ebs, you have not stopped smiling since you came on here. So I got to ask you something. This trade to New York, how has it been for you? It, from just watching out here, and we don't get you as much as we'd like the games, but has it kind of recharged you? Um, yeah. I, I mean, it, it's just it's fun playing um, meaningful games. How about that? I think this is one of the tighter knit groups that I've been a part of since I started playing hockey. So um, it's been uh, it's been a lot of fun. This is the Rod Peterson Show. Hmm. How about that? Good call, boys. Jordan Everly that? bringing us into a brand new week. Yeah. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Feeling recharged? One hundred percent. One hundred percent over here. Welcome to the RP Show, everybody, for a brand new week, a short week. I never wrote down what episode number it is today because I didn't know I've been gone for a week. How good are your eyes? Can you 491. S- I was just testing you. <laughs> Writing it down on my sheet here. <laughs> yeah, it's episode number 491 of Canada's daytime sports talk show. And yeah, I know we look like a couple of butt kissers wearing our Winnipeg Jets gear today. But so what? We're going to explain that in moments here to uh, open up the show. It's, it's a great day already, and we're just barely into the show. Yeah. Um, t- well, coming up on the program today, Ryan Leslie from Sportsnet Flames, and Andy McNeil from VEASAN in Las Vegas. And we talk about when we get together after a weekend, we're like a family of squirrels on meth. I forgot to ask Clark, what's Andy McNeil famous for? He's the digital gambler of NHL betting odds. I didn't even know that. You do now. I do now. (laughs) So we'll get some questions figured out for Andy McNeil coming up in hour two. And the sports doctor is going to be with us as well. A late ad out of Winnipeg, the sports doctor. So you know what we're going to talk about. But I have to say this. We're going to get to the leftovers and everything in a moment. But Winnipeg's been very, very nice to us. Hence the gear. And my inbox was filled up all weekend from my DMs, my email, comments to our website, rodpeterson.com, from Jets fans. And I'll give you a little snippet. A nurse from the, one of the hospitals said, Rod, just read your newsletter, which it's not really a newsletter, the Monday morning goalie. But she said, I didn't even know you were a Jets fan. And I'm like, eh, not quite. I'd like them now. Yeah. But I was neutral forever. But, you know, Edmonton seems to be just a little clicky to us right in Calgary forget about it <laughs> for now forget about it but Winnipeg my friends in Winnipeg and I had you know, a lot of bomber fans uh, sorry Jets fans DMing me yesterday Rods what gonna happen what's gonna happen tonight I said I think the series is gonna end tonight and they said well you're always right so I'm like you're from Winnipeg right but as my friends in Winnipeg said and even people that I don't really know in Winnipeg they said We don't care where you're from. Show us some respect. Talk about what we care about. And we're all good. And here we are. Yeah. And the Jets are rolling into round two of the uh, playoffs. Now, the other thing that had me excited is, came in here today and there's gifts. Gifts galore. I don't really know where to start. But I can tell you what. You junior hockey teams that want to send me golf shirts. (laughs) The The way to my heart is not through my stomach. Right. It's to send me hockey team golf shirts. So from the Spruce Grove Saints and the Stony Plain Eagles of the uh, Alberta Junior Hockey League, both sending me extra large, which is my size, and a letter here from J.J.A. Bear, the vice president of Silent Ice Sports and Entertainment. They own five teams. I won't go through all this. It just says, thank you, Rod, for your continued efforts highlighting and discussing all things junior hockey on your show. It's great to see such a high-profile show use airtime to talk about the teams and leagues where the game's emerging stars come from. Our group, of, our group enjoys tuning into your show regularly. Says he noticed we wear dub swag, so they wanted to send us some AJ swag. And he says, and while we have you, the next time you hear a rumor about the Spruce Grove Saints, don't be afraid to reach out to us directly. And we'd be happy to (laughs) confirm nor deny uh, your reports from J.J. How about that? From J.J. Bear, Vice President of Business Development, Silent Ice Sports and Entertainment. And they also own the Seattle Thunderbirds. So that's uh, that's cool. Guys, I'll be wearing this. You know that I will. Thank you. And then this. And I know people can't see it that are listening right now. But this from the XL Mark Cast Boys down in Seattle. And it was not quite as eloquently typed out on letterhead. On a st- <laughs> sticky post-it note. <laughs> on a post-it note. <laughs> From your friends at just the Mark cast now, Reed and Paul, the XFL Mark cast. So they, I guess they're just the Mark cast, not XFL. I don't know. It's got an X on it. 
Yeah. So, yeah, I got a lot of stuff to wear here and adorn the, uh, the bunker, and it's a great start to the week, and I'm happy to be back. Now, thank you, Jordan, for hanging on. Can we hit the quick six show topics, please? <laughs> And while you do, let me dig out my, my uh, Twitter feed here. My leftovers from Monday night in the National Hockey League. And don't tell anybody, but I went to bed after the first overtime last night. I'm like, I'm not here for this. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was a lot. And like, yeah. So I started jumping on social a little bit just to have a little bit of an outlet because your blood pressure. I mean, I'm just a hockey fan. I'm not even a Jets or an Oilers fan, I'm just a hockey fan. But your, my, my heart rate was at 125, 130 for like 90 minutes straight because every chance, and then it just got so slow and the scales got drugged down because yeah. they were tired. It wasn't entertaining. Not really, but yet you were still on the edge of your seat because that's because you're a hockey It's overtime. Guy. It's overtime. <laughs> sure, but I wanted to go to bed. Jeff, the Stamps fan, writes in and says, you look good, Rod. The week away from the mic did you well. Thank you, Jeff. I appreciate this. This is not like I needed to step away for a break or anything, but I was in that recovery coach training, as you know, and I'm back here in Toyland where it's not life and death. Right. As much as it is to the sports people, it's not actually life and death. Nobody's going to die here today, but they might out in the other world. Uh, anyways, these aren't your dad's jets. And I said that months ago, and some people in Winnipeg got upset. And I'm like, you're not understanding me. My dad's Jets never beat the Edmonton Oilers in the playoffs, ever. They didn't beat anybody in the playoffs. These aren't your dad's Jets. And they're not carrying on their back the weight of the franchise, which is actually the Fra uh, Thrasher's franchise, but you know what I mean. It's an entirely new group of guys. It's like the Bombers that won the Grey Cup in 2019 weren't the same guys that had a 30-year drought. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. This is a new team. And we can get into uh, this. We got the whole day to do this. Basically, where the Jets are going. But my second leftover is where are the Oilers going? I had Oilers fans writing me today saying, what would you do, Rod, for this team? Because they are so upset, obviously. I saw Rashog this morning on SportsCenter saying, losing's unacceptable. <laughs> Getting swept is unthinkable. But a lot of Oilers fans today are telling me that they think Tip did a great job. And I've, I've said Tip's top three NHL coaches, Joel Quenville, Dave Tippett, and I had Babcock in there. Babs isn't even in the NHL anymore. So let's say top two coaches are, would you not agree? You're a big Quenville fan. I'm a Quenville fan. Yeah. Yeah, and I like what he's done in, in Florida. <laughs> if he can just get some goaltending, which he got yesterday uh, from Spencer Knight, who let his first shot in, by the way, and then stopped 36 in a row. But yeah, I like Quenville a lot. Dave Tippett, I don't know him like you know him, right? Um, and haven't had the same experience. But sure, if you say he's up there, I believe it. No, 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 he is. Yeah. No, he is. Oh, uh, you know, like, are we getting into this? I would have got into Gerard Gallant, but he's no longer with Vegas. They let him go. Well, you would have probably with what he did with an expansion sure. team. Peter DeBoer is obviously a good coach. He was had tremendous success in, in San Jose um, doing the same thing in, in Vegas. There's a lot of good coaches in the NHL. From Darren Merck, uh, Workman watching on YouTube. Welcome back, Rod. Missed you here in Salt Lake City. Hope you had a good vacation. Great merch from Reed and Paul. Yeah! <laughs> How about that? Uh. Digging us in Salt Lake City. Where was I? Oilers. Are we getting into this? There's a culture problem there. And normally we say the fish rots at the head. In this case, I don't think that's the case. I think Mike Smith is a good enough goaltender. He and Tippett go back to the Phoenix days. We all know that. They went to the West Conference Finals in 2012. Nobody remembers that. But if you watch the order games, understanding that most goalies are squirrely, most, 98%, right? Mm -hmm. Got a screw loose. He's one. And there was times where he would just gun his defenseman for a turnover or something, right, in games. And I'm like, listen, I'm sorry I'm so old school, but you're seeing in hockey there's a trend swinging back to old school, I think. And it's like, Mike Smith, your job's to do one thing. Stop the puck. That's it. We're not asking you to be a leader. We're not asking you to play the puck, although you incessantly seem to think that you need to. Just stop the puck, man. It's all you need to do. And we can't play the backup, clearly. So it's all on you. And then you saw the goals that were being let in last night, and Connor McDavid given the twice, once on the ice and another time on the bench. So you can tell he's frustrated. So that is a disjointed room 
They're not a team. And that's just between two guys, but like we all played the game. And I gun defensemen too, believe me, but I'm not proud of it. It doesn't make them want to play for you. Right. Right? So that's some stuff that they need to get figured out. And with the guy that asked me this morning, what would you do if you were the Oilers? I said I would address the goaltending immediately. You've had two years with these two goalies. Enough's enough. Do whatever it takes to get Braden Holpe. That's it. He only signed a one-year deal in Vancouver, did he not? I believe, I, I believe so. it is. Like he should. He's got one, one more year. year. Well, then trade for him. I don't care because it's the most important position. I'm getting hung up on my Oilers Jets here, but um, and we got another round to talk about the Winnipeg Jets. I think with this Oilers stuff, it needs to be addressed, and it brings up the the poll question today which, uh, let me find it here, for Capital Automall Universal Collision Center. We stole it from our dude, Arash, who actually tweeted this this morning. Who asks for a trade first, Connor McDavid or Carey Price? And we stole it. Thanks, Arash. And put that up as ours. And we added it as a third option, neither. I actually voted for neither. What are they saying on Facebook? 53% say neither. That's what's leading. Only 3% say Carey Price. Obviously, Connor McDavid's really topical this morning. So 44% say McDavid. So it's kind of McDavid or neither. So it'll be interesting to see where that goes. Yeah. Um, 57% on Twitter saying neither. This is hilarious. Brady Leovold's watching from the uh, Puck Support Network and talking about goalies being squirrely and a little out of it. He says 98% being squirrely is on the low side. I know Brady. I was being charitable. I've told many of these guys, the largest demographic of the people that I work with in recovery coaching is goalies. That would surprise nobody, right? Because what did I tell you that whole story about me and Ed Belfour? I think it was Kelly Chase said to me, how come you guys got to be such good friends so fast? I said, because we speak the same language and you don't speak it. What else did I have? You need... You need coping mechanisms when your whole life is about going into this little cage where you're going to be target practice, right? Oh, yeah. You need, I get it. I get it. I remember, and I'll only say this, I've got to be careful. It was an American goalie that I was dealing with, and I, just on the recovery coaching side, because it is the Rod Peterson show, right? So I'll tell my stories. I was coaching him on certain things. Uh, it doesn't matter what it was. And Went to watch. I was watching the game with his dad in a luxury suite, and they killed every light in the arena. Like, choo, 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 choo. first game of the playoffs, boom, spotlight on the tunnel. And I'm like, my guy's leading them out. I got butterflies, right? Like, <gasps> and I remember calling my coach going, am I supposed to get this connected to my, to my guys? He's like, you'd better. Right? Wow. And, of course, the guy pretty much single-handedly won the series. But um, that's kind of what we do. It's goalies because we speak the same language. Anyways, uh, Toronto, Montreal, a long ways from over. I th- sorry to say. Uh, don't, don't you get that sense? I do. I get a feeling. Montreal's he, put up more resistance than you thought. Much more. Yeah. And they've really they've, they've they've kind of dictated how the series is going to be played. And that's a really good thing for Montreal. Now, Toronto can play that game and still win. You want to dictate it? Okay, we'll play your game and we'll still win. But Montreal's, Montreal's not in such a bad spot. No, they're not. I see Chris Bird watching in Toronto. Says, in the other series, if Carey Price isn't playing like a rock star, the Habs would have lost 7-1 last night. I know, Chris, but if the Bear hadn't stopped to take a dump, he'd have caught the rabbit. Like, whatever. It, they have him on their team. That was the whole thing with Josh Harding with the Pats, right? If they didn't have him, he'd be, they, they'd be terrible. But we do have him, so who cares? It's a 20-man unit. They upset Pittsburgh last year thanks to Kerry Price. This is a different situation. This is a best of seven, not a best of five, and you're playing the number one team in the division, but Kerry Price could steal a series. Well, that's the choice you make as a team. You yeah. decide how you're going to build this. So you're going to make, okay, we're going to invest more in goaltending, and we're going to be on our heels a little bit because we're spending less money up front. But that's why we got the goaltender. It's nighttime in Florida. Look out, Spencer Knight. I see you got the rats out. Oh, yeah. From our boy Waz. Yeah, it's nighttime in Florida. That's the, turning into a series. And I hope the Vegas Golden Knights stick with the flower. 
which it wouldn't surprise me if they didn't if they came back with Leonard in what'll be what game six. I, it wouldn't shock me. I hope that they don't. Um, oh. This was just point one of the quick six show topics. Point two, John Mechie wins the John Cornish Award for top Canadian in American college ball. Not a shock, right? right. I had a vote for that. Thanks, uh, Mr. Mullen, for uh, giving me a vote in that, and the guy I voted for won. Number three, Julio Jones saga. We got to get into that. You were asking Ooh. why I fleeted this morning that Aaron Rodgers, I'm s- swaying to the Aaron Rodgers side, and you asked why. While I was watching ESPN this morning, and they had a clip from him. He was on with Kenny Main last night, Aaron Rodgers, and he said that he wants out. There's no doubt. He didn't report to OTAs yesterday, and he goes, I was being treated like a number. And it just, it hit me in the feels because I know how that feels. I, I, I see where he's coming from now. He's the biggest part of what they're doing, and he wasn't consulted on what they're doing. Tom is! And for a month, I, I just wasn't listening to it, right? I'm like, get your paycheck, play. And Aaron's saying, no, I just don't want to be part of this because I don't feel valued here. And certain guys can do that. Yeah, certain not guys, everybody. Not everybody. Certain guys should be treated that way. And you have to understand when you're running an organization, where's the real value? And your value comes in, how easy can you be replaced? And so you can't expect the second string running back or, you know, potentially a defensive tackle that's, that's okay or somebody else to be treated the same way because, look, it, you can be replaced a lot easier. There's a lot of guys who are very good. But there's, there's not many guys that are Aaron Rodgers. And when you have that much value to the franchise and you make that much money for the franchise, you sell that many tickets and jerseys and everything else, you need to be treated as more than just a quarterback. And that's in any industry. And we hate it because it's not equal and fair. And I'm doing just as much work on a daily basis as you are, but you're more valuable, so you get treated differently. I get it. I'd, I'd feel bad. But you have to understand it's, it's bigger than that. I'm literally now going good for him. And I understand now what the guys are. My guys, like Vernon Adams Jr., I get it. I'm swaying. He's winning the PR battle. Aaron Rodgers. Uh, from Trenton, Norway. Norway calling. I got to hear both radio calls of the Jets Oilers when I woke up here this morning. What a contrast from one call to another. It seems to be the Oilers' problem on how to play defense in the playoffs. It's not the Gretzky-Curry era anymore. Anyways, there's more thoughts on that, but we got to move on. Point four, does anybody care about the World Hockey Championships? I do not. Point five, the Blue Jays drop a marathon versus Tampa Bay. Tampa's the hottest team in the majors. Don't think that because the Blue Jays gave up a lot of runs and lost that series, that they're in trouble. No, they're in trouble that they're in the same division. But overall, the Blue Jays are fine. And point six, Phil Mickelson winning the U.S. Uh, Open, or so the uh, PGA Championship on Sunday wasn't that awesome? Awesome. Yeah, and I don't. I'm shocked that at 50, he's the oldest to ever win a major. I was I was saying that watching that with Cindy. I'm like, um, yeah, I don't know. I I would have thought that Palmer or Nicholas would have won older than 50. But I guess not. Uh, and I'm watching it with Leanne, and she's looking at uh, Phil. And what a boss. He's got the aviators on. He's matching head to toe. Absolute co- boss. And then as they come down 18, they got the ropes down the side of the fairways. But then as they walk out 18, they collapse it from the tee box, right? So they're all walking. And they just swarmed him. And they said they lost control of the crowd. Oh, so cool. <laughs> Jim Nance, they've lost control of the crowd. They very quickly got control of the crowd. I'm sure they unbuckled their tasers. <laughs> I know how that feels. Um, Jeff, the Stamps fan, says he doesn't feel valued. I call that a classic prima donna. I know, Jeff, but we said that five weeks ago. You got to dig into the story, and I'm just saying I get him now. I, was, I felt the same way as you, but there's more to the story. We're going to Calgary next with our buddy Ryan Leslie. This has been the warm-up for our good friends at the Four Seasons Sports Palace. Open now! What are we at? 25% capacity. Come down and watch the Leafs in the Stanley Cup playoffs at the Four Seasons. We'll be right back. You're watching the RP Show on Game Plus TV Network, YouTube, and Facebook Live, and 24-hour sports radio for Suds Full Service Car Wash at rodpeterson.com. You're watching Rod Peterson On Demand. For more of the Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media. 